Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be doodling a few different types of eucalyptus leaves. When I went to Japan, I bought this really tiny sketchbook and I kind of forgot about it so I thought that this would be a good opportunity to doodle on it. The paper is fairly thin so I'm not going to be adding too much paint since I'm going to be using watercolors. But if you are doodling this on a thicker paper, maybe you can add a bit more paint than what I'm doing here. So let's just hold on for a few seconds. Before we begin, let me introduce you to Miss Antenna. This is a very thick strand of Asian hair with a double C, which are unfortunately attached to my head and like to invade on my frames. Sadly, I only found out about this after I finished filming everything and transferred all of my files, so she'll be popping in when I'm drawing because I find it really hard to keep my head far away from the frame as I'm drawing and I need to learn to control her in the future. So I apologize in advance and I hope that this does not distract too much from the tutorial itself. Now let's get back to the instructions. So for this first one, I'm going to be drawing out the true blue eucalyptus. The shape itself is quite simple. It's mostly a circular shape, which comes to a point at the bottom, which is then attached to the midrib of the leaf. These leaves grow on single long branches and they tend to come in pairs from two different sides of the branch, which alters in position for each of the pair. So if drawing them on the branch straight away is a little bit too intimidating all at once, you can also break it down and draw individual pairs on short branches and try to play around with the positions and come up with different angles. Once you have a few, then you can try using them as reference or guide and try to place them in the long branch. The branch itself, I tried to make a little bit crooked even though it's just one branch and that way it looks a bit more natural. As you can see, the shapes so far are very simple. So what I like to do is create more textures on the leaves by making the edges uneven and also creating some folds. This would usually happen to drying or old leaves, but I prefer it this way because I find that it has more character. And as for the midrib and the veins, I try to mix using crooked lines with dots and dashed lines whilst varying the spacing of each of the veins. I'm going to move on and draw the outline for the actual doodle, but if you want to draw more of these for extra exercise, you can also do so until you're comfortable. Now I'm going to draw out the outline thinly with pencil just to map out the placement and things like that and this would make it so much easier to just outline with the pen later and I'm just going to apply what I showed you before. While I draw out the leaves with pencil, I'm actually drawing the simplified version without the textures because I'm going to draw on the folds and the uneven lines straight with the ink and pen. But if you do need extra guidance, you can always draw the details out with pencil. For the very top, I tried to bunch them closer together and also draw out smaller leaves to make them look like younger leaves. To outline, I'm using the Tombow brush pen with a hard tip, which I find is nice and flexible to use, but it's still very easy to control because of the hard tip. And you'll notice that I'm not following the positions of my pencil drawing because I felt like the position was a bit too low, so I'm bringing it a bit higher with the outline. I'm doing this because I'm fairly comfortable drawing these leaves with pen, but again, if you need to adjust certain things, go about it however you're comfortable with it. You can fix it with pencil first or you can adjust straight with pen just like what I'm doing here. Once I'm done with the outline, then I switch to my snowman art liner and I like to use either a size 0.1 or a 0.05 to get really fine details for the midrib and the veins, but this would probably change if you decide to draw this in a much larger scale. So like usual, adjust the size of your pens or brushes according to the size of the drawing and the paper you're drawing on. So here, because I only drew out a single branch, I felt like the page was a little bit too empty. So I ended up adding a small branch cutting on the side to fill up the composition a little bit more and then just outline it like before. 
You can do all of the doodles first before painting, but just for the sake of showing you one by one, I'm going to go straight to putting on the colors for this one. For the first one, I want it to be a muted blue color. I'm doing all muted colors because I want it to look cohesive even though they're different hues. And the colors that I used are Cerulean Blue, Ultramarine Deep, Ivory Black, and Sepia. So I'm just going to start by putting all of the colors down my palette and this way I have very easy access to it and I can always just pick whichever color I want to add more to. This way I can adjust it very easily and also just add water whenever I need to. I want to play around with the value so I get different shades of blue and you can also add more cerulean blue or more ultramarine deep in the mixture. In terms of the placement, I like to do this randomly and I do random shapes. It does not have to be circular, you can make triangles or squares. And I like to go over some of the leaves and also vary it by leaving some negative space as well for the leaves. So it doesn't look like it's completely covered in the blue. And just play around with this. I like to play with the size as I mentioned with the value and I'm also going to add different patterns for each of the eucalyptus just for a slightly different texture. And here is the pattern that I was talking about before. For this one I'm just doing little dots and I'm putting them in a circular shape. And for this, I used a dark value because they are small dots and I still want them to be visible to act as an accent for the doodle. And here is the first one done. For this next one, I'm going to be drawing the silver dollar eucalyptus. For the shape itself, I think it's fairly similar. I'm not really a eucalyptus expert or anything, but from the references I've seen, I feel like the shape is quite similar, so I'm just going to approach it the same way. But this time, in terms of the growth, they do branch out a bit more, so I am placing them in a different way, and this will make it look slightly different even though the shape is pretty much the same. Personally, I just used the angles that I studied for the previous one and then I tried to apply it in a different way for the branches. For the texture, I'm just going to do exactly the same as the previous one and this is going to be basically applied to all of the doodles. But if you do want extra practice for the pen doodle, you can also try to draw it out with pencil first here. As I mentioned before, you can take as much time or as little time for this stage of the trial. But if you feel comfortable drawing straight on the final doodle, then I would say that's great and you can just go for it straight away. This drawing here is just to break it down slightly for the beginners who might feel uncomfortable tackling an empty piece of paper. And once you're comfortable with drawing out the branches and the leaves, you can go ahead and doodle it straight on your paper. I'm just going to follow the same steps, so I'll get back to you again once I move on to the next one. I'm fairly happy with the pencil outline and like usual I've placed just the basic shapes because I feel comfortable drawing out all of the textures straight with pen. But if you would like to, as I mentioned before, you can also draw it out with pencil first. So here I'm just doing the same method. I'm using the Tombow pen to outline all of the leaves and then I'll move on to adding the details with the smaller tip. 
I forgot to mention this before, but for the longer branches, which does not have any leaves, I like to usually add just a small line as if it's jutting out. And I find that this makes the branch look a bit more natural because it looks like some leaves might have been snapped off. Once I'm done with all of the outline, I'm just going to erase the pencil marks. And the reason why I'm doing this after I finish outlining everything, whereas the first one I erased it straight after I just drew out the outline, is because whenever I feel the pencil mark is a bit distracting, that's when I would erase it. So it doesn't really matter at which stage you want to erase your pencil marks as long as it's served its purpose already. Let's move on to painting this now. So here are the colors that I'm going to be using. I have Hansa Yellow and the rest of the three colors are exactly the same which is Cerulean Blue, Sepia and also Ivory Black. So like usual, I'm just going to have all of the colors ready on my palette for easy access. And the reason why I have a blue and a yellow here is so I can adjust the green that I make whether I want to make it a bit more warm and of a yellow green tone or more of a cooler tone with added blue in the ratio. As for the black and sepia, I'm sure you know that those colors will mute the green and the sepia has a tiny bit more warmth than the black and this will give more of a warmer muted green instead. So again, just play around with the value and also the colors. In terms of the value, you can always add more water or you can make the paint a bit of a thicker consistency to get something that's slightly darker and a bit more richer. For the extra pattern on this one, I decided to add lines with varying lengths and I'm again using a slightly darker consistency for the pattern because the shape is much smaller than the rest of the greens. And this is the completed look for the silver dollar eucalyptus doodle. For this next one, I'm going to be drawing a seeded eucalyptus branch and I'm not too sure if this is actually a type or if every single type of eucalyptus has a growth stage which they seed. So this is just the shape that I have gathered from looking at reference images. But in terms of the shape, it's slightly different. It's more of a basic leaf shape but the top rounds off and the bottom is much wider than the top. And with this one, because it is a seeded eucalyptus, I'm going to add tiny seeds as an extra element and I gather them in one single long branch and they branch out into smaller seeds. But I'm also going to add another element of larger seeds. I'm not sure about the larger ones if that's how they naturally grow, but this is something that I saw from a reference image and I thought that this extra element will look cute in the composition. With this one, I'm going to draw them slightly branching out just like the previous one, but this time it has a different type of leaf shape and after drawing out a few of those basic leaves, I'm going to draw out the groups of seeds as well as the single ones for added elements. Just like the previous ones, and because this has a different leaf shape altogether, you can also draw smaller branches to figure out the different angles of the leaves, which you can use as reference as you place them on the full branch. In terms of the texture, I'm going to go about it the same way by making the lines for the main outline slightly jagged, and I like to also add folds to give added character. 
As for the midrib and the veins, I'm also going to treat it the exact same way using the lines, dashed lines, as well as dots to suggest the softer lines of the veins. You guys know the drill by now, I'm just going to sketch it out with pencil first and then I'm going to outline it later on. To finish off the outline, I'm just going to add the extra details and you may have noticed that I colored in the single seeds with my pen. This is because they're single seeds and it's a bit hard to see so I would like to just add that extra definition. For this one, I want the main color to be purple, so I've added the extra Quin Red from the palette and the usual Cerulean Blue, Sepia, and also Ivory Black. For this one, because the colors that I have chosen are quite dark, I am going to leave out all of the leaf shapes since they are also very detailed. So I'm going to leave them as completely white, whereas the previous ones I have played around with painting right on top of the leaves and also a little bit of negative space. So you can see more of the defined leaf shape for this one. I was also more comfortable with this doodling process since this is my third one. So here you can see that I played more with a variation of value. So hopefully this is something that you can apply and learn from for your first doodle as well. For the extra detail, I decided to add a purple that is slightly more blue. So I added more cerulean blue within the mixture. And as for the extra texture, I decided to create dashed lines with the same tone of purple before, but I use a much thicker consistency to make it darker. And that's it for the last one. So that's pretty much it for all of the doodles. Like usual, the tools as well as the list to my social media links will be listed in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!